today we're going to be painting a cubistic monochromatic painting like this bird we see here. But before we do, I want to talk to you a little bit about cubism and what monochromatic painting is. Cubism was a highly influential visual art style in the 20th century and was created by Pablo Picasso and Georges Braque in Paris. The cubistic style emphasizes the flat two-dimensional surface of the picture plane, rejecting the traditional techniques of perspective for shortening modeling and chiaroscuro and refuting time-honored theories that art should imitate nature. Let's take a look at some of Picasso's paintings done in his cubistic style. Now let's take a look at Braque's work and the similarities of his work and Picasso's. And you can also see the influences that they had on each other. All right, so let's take a look at one of Picasso's portraits. Uh, notice that there is not very much color. Uh, this is called mono chromatic. Mono meaning one, chromatic meaning color, so one color. What we're going to be doing is we're going to take this idea of a cubistic style painting and we're going to also be doing a monochromatic color scheme. So now let's watch the video I prepared for you all today to make our own monochromatic cubistic painting. Let's first start out by drawing out what we're going to be painting. Everyone is going to be painting something different. You do not all have to be painting a bird, um, but what your drawing should have is um, height and width. That's called a shape. Um, so it could be a heart, it could be a star, it could be a person's face outline, it could be your favorite animal. You could decide what you want to paint. Um, just as long as there is height and width um, so that you're able to paint it in the end. So now that we have our drawing complete, what we're going to do is we're going to break up the composition. And the reason why we're doing this is so that we can paint each section differently. We're going to have 16 sections at the end. You're going to have three lines going horizontally at a diagonal angle. And then within each of those, you're going to have three vertical lines. Um, that gives four boxes in each of those sections and four rows. In the end, it should look like this. All right, so now we're ready to paint. So what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be um, loading our, our brushes with a lot of pigment, um, and then you're gonna be applying white. So what I'm doing here is I'm adding um, a lot of blue in the beginning, then I put it onto the canvas, and then I get a little bit of white and then I apply it. Notice that I'm consistently going in the same direction. Um, I'm going away from the corner. I'm pulling my brush. Uh, you'll see this later on when I turn the canvas as well. Um, and what you're seeing is uh, there's a consistency of a value change. It's going from a very dark blue to a really, really light blue. Um, I'm starting in a larger section 
in the beginning and I am going to go into the smaller sections later. Uh, I think it's better practice to start in larger areas first and then work your way into the smaller detailed areas later um, so that um, you can practice before you get into the more detailed areas. Okay, now you can see that I have flipped the canvas in order for it to be easier for me to paint. It's easiest to pull paint, um, so that's why I flipped it. So I started in the corner, uh, really, really dark, and I'm adding white, and you can see that it's lightening as I go. Um, this is giving the illusion of a different perspective, um, one that Picasso has done in his pieces, and so that's why we're doing it this way. Uh, lots of different angles uh, and lots of different views. So now I'm going to paint a few different sections of the bird, and I'm painting it the same style that I'm painting the background going dark to light. Um, I am going to do a few sections, they're a little bit smaller, it's harder to paint the smaller sections. If you're having a hard time staying in the lines, what you could do is you can uh, tape off the section that you're painting or you can cut a um, piece of paper and lay it down and put that down on your canvas to keep a nice strong um, line. I advise you not to paint two sections right next to each other. Allow each section to dry before you paint right next to it. Sometimes you're going to have to go back and forth between the white and the color that you have chosen in order to create a consistent value change. This is easiest to do when the section is still wet. Now that you have the idea of how each section is painted, I'm going to show you the last few sections that I have painted through photographs. 